Uh, hi everyone, uh, this is a talk of the academic cooperation of Red Hat Research and Masaryk University in Brno. I'm doing my PhD in cooperation with Red Hat and Pavel is doing his bachelor's helping me with the research. And we'll be talking about TLS certificates, the errors of TLS validation and the associated eco ecosystem. Uh, the talk will be, or we'll try to do it a little bit interactive, so there will be three polls in it, and we will want you to vote uh, during the, uh, the talk so that we have some input from your side as well. So let's start. Uh, you're browsing the web. Oh, sorry, did it work? Yep, you're, bro you're browsing the web, and uh, most likely you're doing a secure connection to the website. When you click the lock icon, you see that the connection is secure. You can see the details of the certificate, all the signatures valid and stuff like that. What would it uh, be like if the connection was not secure? Well, uh, you would see something like this connection not being private with all sorts of information and an error. This can happen not only in browsers, but anywhere when you handle certificates. If you have a certificate and try to validate it using OpenSSL in a command line, you can get something like this. Error 34 at zero depth lookup, unhandled critical extension. And I guess you know what that means, what that is. Uh, you probably don't. Well, believe me, I've asked a lot of developers and it turns out that not many people know from the top of their head what unhandled critical extension is. But we don't worry, we have Google for that. So Googling, unhandled critical extension, OpenSSL. What do we learn? Well, unhandled critical extension. Thank you, Mr. Recommendation. That wasn't particularly helpful. But I don't want to be picking on OpenSSL because other libraries are not ideal either. For example, GNU-TLS has an error saying the certificate presented isn't the one uh, that you expected, TOFU. And it doesn't mean this kind of TOFU. So again, you're left with wondering what the TOFU means if it's not uh, the piece of food that you uh, will or will not have afterwards. Which brings us to the first question that we want to ask you. If you were to guess how many errors related just to certificate validation do you think there are in OpenSSL? Try to vote in the poll section on the right of the hop-in screen. I see four votes so far, though 30 people in the, in the room, so we'll give it a couple more seconds. Mostly going for 20 to 40 or 60 to 80, though I see that nobody thinks that there's uh, at most 20 errors. I can definitely say that there is more than 20 errors. The reality is that, uh, well, one person thought that now. The reality is that uh, there's 78 errors just related to certificate validation in OpenSSL altogether. And that's quite a lot if you want to browse through them or you may need to find something or if you are debugging or testing a software of yours that uses certificates and needs to handle all these errors properly. The situation is rather different in different libraries. OpenSSL is one of the more error-based libraries with GNU-TLS and Embed being about 20 uh, and NSS having actually over 100, though the precise number is complicated to guess because the, the errors overlap, so I've kept it at 100. Uh, we've done experiments here at DEF CONF in 2017, 2018, and 2020 regarding the usability of OpenSSL and the uh, certificate ecosystem. It turned out that uh, even though people think they succeed in using OpenSSL, they were tasked to just create a self-signed certificate, and 87% of, of them thought that they managed to do it successfully. It's turned out that only 45% of them did, uh, and the general usability of OpenSSL was seen as rather poor. Next year in our experiment, we uh, have shown them uh, errors uh, of certificates, five different errors, and we asked them how much they trust the certificate with the particular errors. And it turned out that uh, the opinions were not what we would have hoped for as security engineers. That brought us uh, to thinking, what can we do about it? We have decided that there is a way for us to help in the situation. Click. Uh, as, a as a first part of the process, we have created a website. We have named it X509 errors. 
And the whole idea of the website is that, that it's, it's supposed to be a guide for developers working with TLS validation. Uh, I will now briefly cover the key features of the website. Click. Uh, the website uh, lists errors from four different TLS uh, libraries. Those are OpenSSL, Embed TLS, Bottom, and GNU TLS. Uh, so whenever you work with certificate validation in any of and you encounter some error, then you can find the error here. Uh, the errors are, are also grouped by categories, depending on how the specific error can occur. So we have, for example, trust or chain related errors that happen when during the, uh, during the building of the path. Uh, we link to the we provide relevant links to, to various documents, for example, RFCs uh, or, or manual pages or the official documentation as we think that uh, obviously we cannot show you any, everything, but we can point, it to the right, point the developers to the right direction. Click. Uh, uh, each error on the website is clickable. And when you click on it, click on it, it shows you some additional information. First, it shows you, shows you the original documentation that you can also find in the original library documentation, but it makes sense to list it here as well. Uh, next, uh, for many of the certificate validation errors, we have created an example certificate or rather uh, example certificate chain, uh, which is a spe specially crafted malformed certificate chain that yields this specific error when the certificate validation code is run on it. And this can have various use cases. Uh, first, uh, when you encounter such an error uh, and you might not know uh, what it actually means. So the looking for example, on the way we generate that error could help you uh, where the actual issue lies. Next for us, uh, this has an advantage that if we know that uh, some, some of our malformed certificates yields, for example, in OpenSSL, the error unable to get issue set locally, then we can try and run uh, the other library's certificate validation code to see what error the, the other li library li yields. And Click. Uh, with this, uh, with having this, we can mm, mm, create a kind of a mapping between the errors among the different libraries. Now, the mapping uh, is in many cases uh, really obvious. So, for example, if you have a revoked certificate, then uh, arguably you will have some kind of an error message in each library telling you that uh, a certificate is revoked, but it is not so, it is, it is not so in, for many, for many other errors. So because, because of the fact that some library has uh, more errors than other, then it must mean that when we have an, some, some error in one library, it, it contains uh, a set of like, uh, set of errors in other library. Uh, and this can help, for example, when you transition from one library to another, say you are working with OpenSSL and you know the error permitted violation, and then you switch to embed TLS and encounter an error called bad search not trusted. You have no idea what it is. So you can see that uh, one, one such error corresponding to this error could be the permitted violation. Uh, I have yet uh, not mentioned the, maybe the most important uh, feature of our website and Martin will, will tell you more about that. Uh, moving on from uh, having a comprehensive resource about uh, certificates and all the errors that can happen in four different libraries, we are thinking about the documentation. Now, a second poll comes. 
how long do you think the average documentation for a certificate validation error is? And I mean, in general, we took the commonly used libraries, OpenSSL, GNU TLS, Botan, Embed TLS, Wolf, Polar, uh, MS uh, Crypto API, and stuff like that. Try to guesstimate how long uh, documentation is. Again, we'll leave a couple of seconds. The poll is on the right in the hopping interface. So there's to, there seems to be some engagement. Uh, the majority of you think that it's between five and 10 words, even though there are people uh, who think it's five words or less, and those who, who think it's 25 words or less. Well, the reality looks a bit like this. Uh, it differs in between the, the libraries again, uh, but roughly we can say it's 10 words or less. The only positive uh, exception is the Microsoft Crypto API, whose average documentation is astounding 16 words, with the uh, lighter blue being average and the darker blue being median. So the median is roughly uh, is slightly lower, which means that there are certain uh, errors for which the documentation is much longer because they are probably much more complicated. Uh, and coming from this idea, because we find 10 words to be insufficient to understand and to be able to explain what, uh, for example, unhandled critical extension means, we started to draft a new documentation. And in the, at DEFCONF 2020, we did another experiment when we uh, asked 180 participants that stopped at our booth to evaluate two documentation versions. One of them was the original version, as you've seen previously, for the unhandled critical extension, the very, very, very short version saying just unhandled critical extension. And our documentation that was maybe even overly long, but we wanted the second extreme so that we could discuss uh, where in, the, in between these two, the ideal set documentation in the mind of the developers would be. This, would be. this is the actual unhandled critical extension version that we uh, propose them next to the original one. As for the results, uh, the new documentations, the versions that we created, uh, we tested it on uh, three different errors, uh, was shown to decrease incompleteness, ambiguity and inconsistency from the self-reported uh, opinions of the developers, though slightly increased in bloat in Tango. Uh, this was kind of expectable because it's much longer than the original one, uh, but uh, I have to stress that uh, they, they have seen incompleteness and ambiguity as very much decreased, while only a couple of them thought that it's slightly bloated. Uh, the new documentation increased the understanding and the, satisf the subjective satisfaction and the perceived helpfulness of the documentation as well. Asking about the form, it turned out that uh, the developers wanted just slightly shorter documentation as the ideal length compared to what we had. Ours was roughly 27 lines. They wanted uh, about 22 to 24, uh, but they uh, put a focus on the structure of the documentation, that if it's well structured, it can be quite long. Uh, and overall, they were generally satisfied with the structure that we provided. Uh, that looked like this, uh, the error called a very short summary and then four sections of explanation, security perspective, what to do and consequences. Although in the end, analyzing the uh, textual qualitative opinions of developers, we decided to merge security perspective and consequences into a single section for a slightly easier and lighter structure. Uh, uh, then, uh, for, the, for an overall comparison, 89% per of the participants in the DevConf 2020 study preferred our design uh, to the design, uh, the original one, to the short one. Uh, which brought us to uh, creating these new versions of the documentation and putting them into our comprehensive website that uh, lists uh, all the kind of knowledge that we have in the ecosystem of uh, certificate validation errors. At the moment, we have uh, the new documentation version just for six errors of OpenSSL, but we are gradually devising more also as part of the academic attempts uh, at the university with students of security, teaching them how to write documentation that explain what is necessary to decide what is necessary to include and what is uh, necessary to exclude from the ideal, uh, so, to say, so to speak, documentation. Lastly, I will present uh, what we are planning to do in the future. Click.
uh, as Martin has already said, we plan to include the redesign documentation for as many errors and pos as possible uh, because it is the key feature of the website. We also plan to add more libraries into the mix because we still don't cover uh, many used libra many commonly used libraries, for example, J uh, Java libraries that are commonly used in mobile devices or NSS as well. And we also need to work on the example certificates as well as we still don't cover uh, all of the errors with, with them. And it's a bit tricky replicating uh, each of the errors. Click. Uh, uh, recently, we have also started research on analyzing a huge data sets of uh, certificate chains that are available on uh, that are available on the internet, and uh, analyzing basically the prevalence of uh, the individual errors on the internet. And the expected outcome of this is that. Uh, uh, some of the errors are much more prevalent than others. On the other hand, some are extremely rare or even non-existent in the wild. So there is a question arising whether it would make sense to merge the, the extremely rare uh, error messages. Next, quick. Uh, lastly, uh, we are, we are still talking about certificate validation errors, but uh, we can all agree that uh, uh, the, the most likely source of X509 errors is when implementing some kind of an application that connects uh, using TLS to some server. And the, the detailed uh, up-to-date source of information on this topic is kind of a missing, kind of missing on the internet. Uh, there have been uh, some attempts, for example, by the Fedora security team. Uh, they have written a, a very well written and uh, useful documentation uh, precisely on this topic, but that was like in it was like seven years ago, and it is now outdated and it doesn't cover all the necessary features needed to provide the secure TLS stock collection, for example, revocation checking. A click. So we aim to make this resource, uh, we, we aim to create such a resource uh, for various libraries and we aim to make it as, as detailed as possible, covering all the necessary aspects of secure TLS. So for example, hostname checking uh, or revocation checking, uh, click. Uh, we aim to have the source code well commented so that even beginners can understand the options and why the exact steps are taken. Click. Uh, we also plan to li link the, uh, all the relevant documents here because uh, if I'm sure the developers can find initial ad additional info, info there. Uh, click. And in in many problems in, in some problems in TLS, there may be various alternative approaches. Uh, so, for example, the mentioned revocation checking can be done multiple ways uh, by the traditional certificate revocation lists or uh, by OCSP or OCSP stapling. And each of these uh, approaches has its own pros and cons, and generally. Uh, Revocation checking is very tricky to implement correctly. So we would like to also list the alternatives with the implementations, list the pros and cons, and explain when it is useful to uh, try one approach and when to use the other approach. And it's all for me. So wrapping up the section, uh, what did we have here? Uh, we presented you an industry academic cooperation of Red Hat Research and Masaryk University, uh, helping PhD students and bachelor students and master students to do their work and do something that's academically interesting, but also uh, which has outputs that the industry benefits from. 
and we are aiming to improve the certificate validation uh, ecosystem or the situation by consolidating all the errors from multiple widely used libraries in one place. We created a website for that. The website is already online for actually for more, more than a year with gradually adding stuff in it uh, and now adding better and redesigned documentation for the particular uh, errors with example certificates for uh, and mapping of the, of the errors uh, across multiple libraries. In the future, we would like to add more examples and more improved documentation pieces uh, and include more libraries, TL, TLS client programming guides, error occurrence statistics. There are many more ideas that will hopefully come uh, if, the, if the project continues as the academic industrial relationship. Which brings us to the last poll question that we have and would be interested in what feature of the website that we described do you find the most useful? Either the developer guides presented the last, those still upcoming, not yet present online, the cross library mapping showing what errors are what in a different library, the new rewritten documentation prolonged that they are just on the website for the moment, or the example certificate that uh, is testing and uh, can make deterministic uh, well, uh, testing and QA uh, on all of the errors that are possible there. Again, a couple of seconds for voting in the polls panel on the right. I see that so far the new extended documentation is leading with six votes uh, with the others uh, having a single person voting for them. And with this question and uh, basically these contributions of ours, we'd like to end our talk. Thank you for your attention uh, and welcome any feedback or Q&A if there is any. Uh, we'll be available or at least I'll be available, available in the Discord after the session. I'm not sure about Pavel. We are, avail we are uh, able to take Q&As now if you have any. So I have a question. Um, so you said there were 78 errors in OpenSSL, right? Yeah. Um, uh, have you taken a look at the new OpenSSL? I think it's through OpenSSL 3.0 that's coming out uh, pretty much now, I think. We haven't checked the 3.0. There were changes from uh, definitely pre-100 uh, to 100 and some compatibility breaking changes, very nice ones uh, from 110 one, to 111, I think. Uh, we've been in touch with the developers regarding the previous experiment as well, and uh, we've been happy to see some of the documentation and manual pages uh, think uh, upgrading nicely and actually uh, improving the stuff that we've shown the developers have complained about, uh, but we haven't focused on the 3.0 yet. I've been looking into it recently, uh, but it's not yet at the website.